Welcome to the Legacy Speaker Show. I am your host, Jasmine Haley, and today's guest is Karina Moore Metz, and I am so very excited to have you. Thank you for coming on to the show today. Thank you. I am so excited to be here whenever I get a chance to share my story. I am just all for it. Yes, and your story is powerful. Listeners, we are going to be talking about why cultural legacy is important for us, but also for our business. And I had to have uh, Karina on here, and I'm, you're going to know by the end of this why it was necessary. So let me first introduce our guest. Karina Mora is a professional photographer, speaker, and successful podcaster devoted to helping people reclaim their cultural legacies and elevating her native Mexican culture through photography, guided trips to Mexico, y'all, and spoken word, okay? Her podcast, Elevating La Cotora, features stories from first and second generation Latinas who are working hard, pursuing their passions, and pouring their positive efforts into the next generations. We don't talk about and we don't understand or even think often about our legacy. We often think that it's something that happens towards the end of life. But there's something really special about the work that you do that all of us need to consider in our business. So just let me, let the listeners know, because I already know your story is Bob. Let the listeners know how cultural legacy and establishing that in your business came about for you. Yes, it is. Uh, seven year work in progress to get me here. But as you said, I am a photographer. I started out in the wedding industry, which is a huge industry. I'm in the Chicago area. And, and so through wedding photography, I was building my business. I was building my business with my husband and it was one particular wedding and this wedding happened to be at like the height of my career. And it was on Cinco de Mayo. And so you already can kind of tell that during this wedding, I had the unfortunate experience to have to photograph my own culture being appropriated at this wedding. And I had to smile. I am professional. I did my job. But at the end of it, I was left feeling this emptiness, this confusion. How did I get here to allow this to happen? How did I assimilate enough to have clients feel like they this is okay in front of my, my face? And then I had to ask myself, is this how I want my children to also navigate through life? Is this how I wanted them to see me, that it was okay for this to happen? So it was that one pivotal experience that really helped or got me thinking, is this how I wanted to continue building my business? Yes, I had been able to build a lucrative wedding photography business, but was it worth it if my own culture, my own identity was being mocked and was at stake for the sake of my children? Yes, yes, absolutely. And what what I often say with business, it is a mental, physical, and spiritual journey. Like we're going to learn so much about ourselves in the process. When you're a speaker, uh, it, it is it is something that could be very vulnerable. It could be something that taps into parts of your life that you're sharing in a very visible platform. And our businesses should be aligned with how we want to show up in the world and the and towards the contributions. But it also sometimes will reveal to us the things that we need to work on that we may have put to the side in order for us to continue growing in our business. So I, I just love that you shared that aspect. And so when you when you got to that pivotal moment in your business, how did you center cultural legacy moving forward from that experience? It was really a reconstructing of how I had come to be at that place. I 
was so burnt out after that wedding season because of that one experience. And so I had to say, okay, I need to take a break. And what I did was I went to Mexico and I took a photography workshop in Mexico. And it was the first time I had been to Mexico by myself, like without family. And so it was an experience that I was able to kind of uh, be personal about. I took time to reflect. I took time to ask myself those questions. Is this how I wanted to build my business? Is this what I wanted for my family? I asked myself those like life-changing questions, those uh, midlife or quarter, at that point it was my quarter life crisis questions. <laughs> and so it was really being back in the land around the people that I wanted to like learn about. Like I had gone to Mexico several times growing up as a kid, but it was only to visit family, maybe go to the beach for a vacation. But I hadn't really dug into what it was, what it meant to be Mexican. Mm -hmm. And that was like, there is a lot of history tied into that. And so that was the first piece. I needed to really ground myself in my cultural identity in order to move forward and to answer those questions. Like, what did I want my life to look like? What did I want the life of my children to look like? So a lot of times it's just taking a step back and starting from scratch. Yeah, yeah. And I think what's really important, especially for our BIPOC listeners or people who come from underrepresented groups, we need to take in consideration parts of our cultural legacy. And of course we know, and for most of you, if you've ever heard me speak about culture um, in my, my own talks, it's beyond just ethnicity. It could be our gender. It could be so many, our sexual orientation, so many different things. So for anyone that's in that space of being in business, unfortunately the norm is not always as diverse as we are. But I what I'm hearing from you is a level of freedom that you were able to achieve by tapping into that, right? And doing so and being brave enough to make sure that moving forward in your business, as you go out there and you share your message, you're not going to deny parts of yourself in the process of you establishing this legacy in your business. Yes, that's correct. I think at, as I was building my wedding photography business, I had created this dual life for myself. I was a life as a wedding photographer and I played that role very well. But then I was also who like who I was at my core, a mom, Mexican American, a daughter of an immigrant, and those to like, I could do those two very well, mm -hmm. but I wasn't whole. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the, that pivotal moment. Did I want to continue building my business as this other life? Or did I want to be proud and to show my children what I was building to, to have them be proud of who they were, who they are culturally? Mm -hmm. And I realized that there was such a disconnect mm -hmm. because of how I had grown up and mm -hmm. how we had been taught. So even if you're not BIPOC, like thinking back to terms that you may have heard, like, oh, well, we don't see color or like everyone is is the same. And so growing up with those, that mentality, mm -hmm. like people of color create that duality mm -hmm. and at, at some point in time, you're going to have to ask yourself, like, are you, is this how you want to live? Or mm -hmm. do you want to truly be whole and embrace all of you? And that also is a lot of work because it's a relearning for yourself, but also relearning for the people around you that have come to know you as one or the other. Mm -hmm. So it is a lot of work, but for the sake of your own mental health, for your own identity, and for the success, essentially, of your business, it's so important to make that decision to step into your wholeness. Because if you don't, it will 
lead to burnout and it will lead to maybe resentment of what you created. Yeah. Resentment, frustration, anger, overwhelm, misalignment, coins, missing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cause you all messed up and jacked up uh, from that. I mean, it's, it's so very real. So, you know, one of the myths that I often hear from speakers is like, I don't have the right accent or my name is too ethnic or I haven't written a bestseller. Uh, what there's some other myths that come up. Um, I'm too heavy. I don't have the right ethnicity. My hair isn't straight. I mean, like the, the list can go on and on on barriers that we feel prevent us from actually going out there and sharing our message. And really what's preventing us is ourselves. What's preventing us is ourselves. So when we're looking at how we want to show up in the world, showing up as our most authentic self, our most authentically aligned self is going to lead to more growth in our speaking business, in our photography business, in whatever business that you decide to create for yourself as you are going out there and honoring your legacy. Yes, for sure. I think in the, the next part really is like thinking back to the lies that you've heard. Could Because as I was building my wedding photography business, I was hearing from people that did not look like me, did not have my lived experience, But I was hearing from people, oh, you have to pretend, you have to act your way to the top, you have to, you're, you're trying to attain this certain level of clientele. And I realized that the things that I was hearing were feeding into my denying of myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized that there, that is where the disconnect came. And as I started, uh, tapping into my community, like in the wedding industry, I would meet other Latinas and I would ask them, like, are you feeling this? Like, why is it a struggle for me, but not my peers? And they were like, yes, I am so thankful you said that because no one else is talking about it. Mm -hmm. And that is when I started to create community and see the patterns that it wasn't necessarily my skill that was the the issue, but it was me creating this duality and separating who I was that was leading to the burnout and also me denying and not stepping into who I fully was, was denying me the clients that actually could relate to me and wanted to work with me. Mm. Mm. So you, oh, that's so good. That's so good. Blocking the people that you could serve because you're not willing to step into your cultural legacy. Yes. That's powerful. That is powerful. So for someone that wants to to start, you had mentioned, you know, you come into the realization. Can you share another tip for them to be able to start the process of honoring their cultural legacy in business? Yeah. So I mentioned like the first step is to acknowledge that you're in this predicament, you're in this realization of a duality that you've kind of set up for yourself. The second step is to actually want to do something about it. I think it's this, this work is so hard and so heavy. And you have to know why you're doing it. For me, it's my children. I don't want them to have to grow up in this duality. Mm -hmm. After that, that, that's when the work comes. That's when you start diving into the history of your culture, of other cultures, diving into the, the history that is untold, because we all know that there are holes. If you're living in the U.S., there are holes in the history that we're taught in school. So it's going back and relearning and embracing the lies that we've been told. I mean, it's, it's hard to accept But once you start doing that research, you have a better grounding and a better understanding of your culture and who you want to show up as. And then that that leaves you open to actually embracing your cultural legacy, starting to build and dream what that might look like for your own life and in your business. And 
that could be as simple as just starting to show up and post about your history, your culture on social media, talk about it on blog posts, maybe start implementing it in some of the things that you offer, whether it's product or service-based. For me, I started offering prints from Mexico. I would go to Mexican cities and spend time there, learn about the city, take pictures, and share that on social media and then also share that as fine art photography. So that was just one way that I was able to to kind of pivot and introduce my own cultural legacy in my business. Yes, yes. And then you even evolved that to guided tours in Mexico, which is super exciting. <laughs> yes. So once I started doing all of this work, this was around 2017, 2018, 2019. I was like, I wish people like my friends could come with me and experience this, like actually learn from experts, like cooking classes, making Mexican bread, learning the history of the city. I wish I, people could come with me. And right. so that was my idea. And 2020, you know, put a put a pause on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But finally, now in 2022 and 2023, I will be offering guided tours, guided trips to Mexico, where I curate the whole itinerary. And it's very like cultural based. We're learning history, we're learning skills, we're learning, and we're forming relationships with each other and having these hard conversations. Yes, yes. I love that. Now, y'all, let me tell you, Karina, I thank God for her, okay? Because <laughs> she's an OG client, all right? She is our first person that said yes to our speaker mastermind, our heart-driven program. And she was that one yes that y'all often hear me talk about. I was looking for that one yes when I was in a pit of despair in business. And she was that one yes that came through, that told me, that let me know that God said, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> I got this one person, we're going to try it out. So I, I want to kind of tap into just letting her explain why speaking is important for us as business owners, because I think just from what you've been able to do with your speaking, everyone's speaking journey is different. A lot of people think that it's just on stages and it can go beyond that. It could be so many things that are that is beyond just a keynote. So I would love to know like why speaking has been a critical part for you and your business, especially coming from your background as a photographer and as someone who's pivoted into doing more in a cultural level for um, your, your work. I think if you are a business owner, your story is going to be that connecting point between you and your clients and why people want to work with you, buy from you. And so I knew that I needed help in kind of packaging my story in a way that could be relatable, but also impactful. And so I'm so thankful that you worked with me, that you helped me kind of tailor my story. And I think it's so helpful in everything that I do, because like, as I'm building this brand as a photographer, as someone who le leads guided trips, you said that I'm a podcaster. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important for me to be able to relate and tap into other people's stories. Mm -hmm. And people also need to be able to do that to mine. Mm -hmm. And like I said, like it was just me being able to share my experience and asking like, hey, have you experienced this too? Is it just me that opened up the door to other conversations and to the community that I'm building that's like, no one talks about this. Like, I feel like I'm alone. I feel like maybe I was gaslit or I'm not thinking Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just re reverting back to those ideas. Oh, just let it go. Don't say anything. Sweep it under the rug. And so I think it's so powerful when we share our stories, we create that community and those relationships in order to 
which will then like help us propel ourselves in business, in visibility and in community. Yeah. What would you say to those who are like, waiting to to do speaking because i feel like with your unique background someone would say well you know wait till you get to having 10,000 followers wait till you get to like this high high end point um what are like some shifts that that concrete shifts that happened for you that you would able you were able to see by not waiting to work on the speaking part of your business i think it's ever <laughs> I think you're always going to be working on your speaking mm -hmm. and whether you wait till you have X amount of followers or have X amount of revenue or like where you're at in your business, like you're always going to be saying, oh, well, sure, I have 10,000, but maybe I, I'll wait for another 5,000 to really like you have to check yourself and say, like, is that reality or is that just my fear getting in the way yeah. i think the sooner you start the better that you're able to get to that level of visibility i think it's so important to name that lie that says i need to be x y z mm -hmm. in order to speak or for in order for people to take me seriously I mean, I reconstructed my whole business and I did it by just sharing my story. And the more I shared my story, the more people related to me. People want to connect with people, not someone who is like, oh, well, I'm at 10,000, so I'm gonna be like this superstar. They want to create relationships and that is what's gonna open the door and to really like help you with your skills. Speaking is not always easy. It's not always something we wanna do. So we put those lies in front of us to like, okay, well, when I'm at this place, then I won't be as scared. But the reality is if you don't start, then you're always gonna be at that, that beginning level of being, oh, I'm too scared. Yes, yes. And let me tell you, Karina is a master, okay? <laughs> at extemporaneous speaking. I'm just going to say that. She's mad good, y'all. So, I I want to I want to give her the opportunity to share, you know, where you can find out more about the movement that she's doing and also let anyone who is an event organizer or is looking for a speaker to tap into your audience and explain cultural legacy. Karina is the person for that. She's got amazing programs to help support you in taking the necessary steps. She's got programs and a framework that will help you take, take you through the steps of going through your own cultural legacy movement. So let the listeners know where they can find out more information about you and your work. I am on Instagram, like almost all the time. You can find me on Instagram at Karina Mora underscore prints. Also my website, garinamora.com. And I am also a podcaster. So you can find me on Instagram at elevating la cultura or elevating la cultura.com. And I have a lot more in-person events where we're building community uh, through Elevating La Cultura. I have a whole calendar coming out for 2023. So if you're in the Chicago area, be on the lookout for that so we can get together and have these conversations in person. Ooh, I love it. Well, thank you so much, Karina, for being on the show. Yes, thank you. This was amazing. Yes, it certainly was. Oh, <laughs> Y'all, I absolutely loved our conversation today. I think there's something so beautiful when you can live and breathe and build a business with more authenticity. So I want to encourage each of you, if you know that there are parts of yourself that you're kind of pushing down into the wayside, you're not honoring yourself, you're not honoring the whole part of who you are, I hope that you continue to listen and replay this episode and think about the brave and courageous steps Karina had to take in order to establish her own cultural legacy. Those are steps that we often have to take as underrepresented groups, as underestimated groups, as people who come from a BIPOC background and or what have you. There are often other 
measures that we kind of have to work through as we're getting visible and we're going out there and speaking, which is why this topic was so critical for each of you. So I highly encourage you to go follow Karina. Make sure you take a listen to her amazing podcast, listen to her resources, join her guided tours to learn about the Mexican culture. And if for those of you who are interested in finding out more about elevating your speaking, you can reach us at jasminehaley.com and I will see you all at our next show. Bye-bye.